Last two mags were aftermarket, are aftermarket mags, so is this one. I made that loose. Back to the stock mags. That blade is absolutely miserable to shoot with. How's it going guys? I'm Chris and this is Regular Guy Training. So, today we're going to be talking about this guy right here. The CZ Scorpion. Whether or not you got the rifle or the pistol version of this individual gun here. What you're more than likely running around with is a 9mm um, thing, right, that shoots pistol bullets. So, here's the deal. Uh, I'm going to approach this as its own individual thing, right? The number one thing that I'm not going to um, compare it to is a legitimate submachine gun because that outclasses a semi-auto uh, pistol caliber firing something about every time. So, getting that out of the way, what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to rate this based on its own individual merit, right? Now... Here's the thing. My buddy Opie decided that it was uh, cool for him to lend me this individual uh, piece here. Knowing that I break everything that I touch. So, you know, good on him, I suppose. But here's the thing, right? This is a 9mm blowback operated freaking thing that a lot of people use as a pistol caliber carbine. Now... What this is touted as is that it's touted like it's the uh, it, it's it's almost difficult to say because a lot of people talk about this thing like it's Jesus on wheels, okay? Like it's the greatest thing that has ever existed, period, or that's ever been invented, right? You see how I got the Jesus on wheels deal, but. There are parts where it is and there are parts where it isn't. I'm just going to go ahead and go over the things that I like and the things that I don't like. And you guys can make the judgment for yourself as to whether or not you personally want this thing. Now, first and foremost, I love the sights on it. Okay, Front and, uh, front and rear are adjustable for elevation and windage respectively. Right, and they're pretty, e and it's pretty easy to do so. Okay, you, you adjust this guy in pretty much the, the same way that you would like a Troy rear sight, and this guy you would adjust like an M4 sight. So whatever, right? Works out pretty good. I personally enjoy them because they're easy to pick up, they're easy to adjust, and you can dial them in pretty well. The fact that there's like you know rails and stuff for you to put things is also kind of neat. Um, would I mimic this individual setup uh, with the with the particular optic and light that are on board? Uh, no, but I would put out something fairly similar with you know an optic and a light, right? But the fact that it has the interface to do that is awesome. Now, 
in this or rather any configuration that I've seen it in so far, they're pretty light. Okay, the only part that you really start to feel weight is in the bolt itself. Okay, the bolt itself is pretty stout, but that's about it, really. I mean, that's that's it, it's kind of like a Mark 19 for those of you guys that have had experience around those things. It's a 40 millimeter belt fed automatic grenade launcher. Uh, it feels like a third of the weight is in the uh, the bolt and carrier group, which is kind of what this feels like, right? So there you go. Now, here's the thing. Wait, before I move on, because I'm already, I was already getting ready to move out into cons. It is reliable as shit, okay? It's very difficult to stop this thing from working, uh, especially because of its short barrel nature and it's blowback operated and all that stuff. You guys get it. It's very difficult to stop. Now, Unless you do anything crazy, it's it's safe to say that it's going to work no matter where you bring it. <clears throat> as far as stuff that, um, well, let's move on to accuracy really fast. Now, as far as target ammo is concerned, uh, with 115 grain ammo, right, it's not that great. I'll show you what I mean here in just a second. That's a 25, guys. That's bad. <laughs> uh, it, it's not very good uh, with 115. But with 124 defense loads, that type of stuff, where you're messing around with heavier grain ammunition, um, honestly, it does fantastic. Right? It's actually kind of hard to beat in the accuracy department for its size and, and its caliber and all that stuff. So... It's crazy, because with 115, it just does not do very good, right, as far as accuracy is concerned. So, as far as just individual training and stuff like that, I'm not a huge fan of its accuracy. I'm really not, you know, because while the group that you saw me shoot would be acceptable, uh, for sure, in like a defense-type scenario or whatever the fuck, right, um, if you're in an actual defense scenario and stuff... What your body is doing and what and, and the and what's happening to you as far as adrenaline and just having a retarded high, high uh, heart rate and your hands not wanting to uh, do their jobs and stuff like that. Uh, results like that are not indicative of what you're probably going to do under stress, right? So that bothers me until I think about well, if I'm using this as a home defense piece or whatever. I'm not putting full metal jacket in it. I'm putting spear gold dots or HSTs or, you know, pick your flavor of jacket at hollow point. And with stuff like that, and I tried those two loads, it prints really accurate, like clover leafing at 25, which you should, right? So what initially bothered me, I don't care about. I really don't because as far as, um, as far as just like practice and, and all of that stuff, and training courses and whatnot. Okay, I, I can take the accuracy hit, but if I up, but if I, you know, put the defense load mag in it, I know that it'll shoot very well. It's just keep this in mind. If you go to zero it, zero it with that defense load, and then deal with what happens later as far as the uh, the practice, uh, the cardboard killing, full metal jacket stuff. Just accept that. Okay. Here's the thing also. Um, we're starting to drift into what I don't like land. Uh, first and foremost, to finish on this thing is shit. Uh, I don't understand how a lot of people uh, could think that the finish on this thing was awesome. Because this thing went to Florida for a pistol class, right? And it sat outside with us. Right? It was just leaned up against a bench, okay? Because it was a pistol class. It didn't do much of anything but sit there. 
And by the end of the four days, it was rusting everywhere. Okay. Uh, obviously, the Bolton Carrier Group, what was exposed, was, was getting rusted. The pin here was getting rusted. I had to brush a lot of stuff out. Okay. The sling loops, the muzzle device up here, uh, everything pretty much that was metal minus the sights was trying to rust. And that is, that's fucking terrible. It really is. That's terrible. Um, the only, the only type of finish that I can really recall that does the same thing is like a Wasser 10, dude. I'm not a huge fan of that at all. Uh, the next thing here is, <sighs> I understand that this is a point of contention. Right? I really do. I understand this is a point of contention. So understand that the following is just a set of my opinions. Okay? Now, first thing, what the, what the fuck is this? Why did we have to be super different? Okay? I get it. Yeah, it's usable and, and you can work it and that's fine. But did we really have to reinvent the wheel? Do we really have to go back to try and act like we're MP5-ish? And if we were, why didn't we just have an individual latch for it, like an actual MP5? Because I understand guys wanting to do this mess and stuff like that. I, I understand that. But if you're going to do a latch like that and you want to make it all ambient stuff, why not we just use a regular like MP5-style latch? What, what, what's the point of that? What is the point of this? Why is this here, and why is it rounded off and easy to slip off, off of? You know, um, I understand why it's there. I understand why people like it. And, and it's a training issue as to why I personally am displeased with this thing right here. I get it. It is a training issue. It can be fixed as far as you and how you handle this. I just personally don't like it. I don't like it at all, honestly. Honestly, you could have put a button in there, or if you wanted to do this thing, you could have made an MP5 style latch. There was no reason to try and be all edgy and shit. Um, next thing, this right here. I <laughs> I get very, very highly irritated at half-assed ambi, ambi controls. Okay, I understand, right? You wanted this lever to be freaking small and out of the way so that dudes didn't dig into their shit while they were shooting while they were shooting right-handed even though you know it digs into your shit while you're right-handed anyway um i'm not a huge fan of that i'm not a huge fan of you know why guys feel the need to make weird safeties too i mean again look i get it we're trying to be different CZ, CZ's always been the guy that wants to be different. Um, but this, especially with the grip angle of your pistol grip here, it's just annoying as shit. It really is. You know, you could have at the very least made it to where you could change this thing out. So I'm not a huge fan of that at all. Um, to me, ambi controls that are lazily done really kind of piss me off, probably because I'm, you know, wrong-handed. But it, it's annoying. So whatever. Uh, but that's it as far as the controls front for me. Uh, I, I really do dig that aside of it having a regular bolt lock open feature, you have the ability to lock the thing up like, a, like an MP5, right? Every once in a while, and this is just my limited experience with this, every once in a while I'll get confused as to whether or not I lock the thing to the rear or if I'm trying to release the bolt like normal. But... Really, that's a training issue more than anything else, right? So, there are some guys that really don't like that. They're just kind of like, well, why don't you just have a non-reciprocating charging handle in there? If you need it, it's there, and you could use the bolt, and you can use the bolt release here. Uh, the reason for that is, and this is what I believe was their was CZ's thinking about the matter, was that. Okay, under normal circumstances, that's great. You know, you'll pretty much never use the charging handle, right, to lock the action of the rear unless unloading the gun. Well, a really good reason for using this charging handle and the reason why I think it was included in this is one-handed type stuff. Um, or fixing problems that require you to strip the magazine out of the gun. 
um, that are also one-handed, mostly stuff like that, wounded quote-unquote operator type stuff. And here's why. The most common thing shot in self-defense, period, in self-defense or in aggressors is the hands, right? And that's because as far as just trading bullets with, with fools is concerned, people tend to just focus their vision on the thing that's trying to kill them, right? So for one reason or another, bullets tend to gravitate in the direction of what you've got in your hands, so the hands end up getting shot. So having an ability to just kind of set this on the ground, throw your boot behind, uh, you know, whatever you want me to call this, and then using that one available hand to run that action to the rear and then lock the gun up is very, it, to me, it's very important as far as not so much the things that are going right type deal, but for when Murphy shows up and decides to fuck your day type stuff. Now, I am a huge fan of this right here, right? It took me a little while to get used to all this other squirrely shit, but this right here is awesome. It's huge. It's etched really well. It's very, very easy to, um, to actuate unless you're operating around a camera. <laughs> but, uh, well, it's a tripod. But it's very easy to just go ahead and strip an old magazine out, insert the new one, and then use this guy to drop as a lefty, right? Because it's right there. Functions kind of like a bad lever, right? But as a right-handed guy, it's real easy for you to do the same thing. Uh, because honestly, once you just kind of insert that magazine, you can push on that and it's over with, right? So no big deal there. Um, I, I really do like that that lever is, was made in that way. Um, mostly because it's very functional. Let's talk about this, this trigger right here, right? Um, I don't know why, I don't know why that we need a, I really don't know why it is that we need something that feels like a very heavy and gritty Glock trigger in what's supposed to be a pistol caliber carbine, right? I don't know why that's there. That trigger is pretty ugly. I'm not saying that you can't work with it, but um, if we're going to compare it to, let's say, a military weight trigger in an AR or something... It's pretty shit. Uh, let's be real here. It's it's pretty shit. There are a lot of guys that try to make excuses for it and stuff like that. But they're honestly, yeah, you can work around it for sure. But with the trigger the way it is, why aren't you buying a, a Roni and then SBRing it? The trigger feels the same, in all honesty. And you'll pro and I, I'm I'm just not a huge fan. Um, as far as up as far as I'm aware. There are, um, like, aftermarket kits for it, as well as pistol grips. So, okay, whatever. But as it comes stock, I'm not a giant fan of it. Now, let's talk about round count and stuff, right? Now, Opie, the guy who owns this gun, has spent uh, quite a bit of time with this gun. Um, I know for a fact that he's taken... Our uh, pistol one and two class with it. I'm sorry, not pistol one and two, rifle one and two class with it. Um, he struggled a little bit, but you know he he managed to make it work. And especially during rifle two, because that's when we start getting into a lot of one handed esque stuff. Uh, but uh, so that's 2,400 total rounds um, on four days. He's used it on several other classes and stuff like that uh, elsewhere and I put about 1200 rounds through it total right so it's had its fair share of rounds I can thoroughly say that it's that it's absolutely reliable it's absolutely worth a look if the stuff that bothers me doesn't bother you right and I tell you what this is a really, this is kind of a big deal as far as a competitor to the MPX and all that stuff. I'm not sure which one I like more. I would have to honestly get my hands on, on the other in order to draw a true conclusion from this point. I know it sounds 
I know it sounds like I've been just beating on this thing for over half the review, but you have to understand, if I'm going to critique something, I'm going to critique everything. Um, so, obviously, there were things that I liked, there were things that I didn't like, and the most important things, is it accurate, is it reliable? Okay, does it do its job? Yeah, it does just fine. Okay, so... Don't think that I don't like this. I actually really do. It just has its own little quirks, just like any other firearm, really. Now, before you guys ask, okay, I'm going to tell you what. I don't even know what this what this is here. Uh, it's sitting on a blade and a, uh, and a CAC tube. I don't even know what this folding stock thing is. I'm going to tell you right now, though, that I hate it. Uh, you guys saw in uh, some of the shooting footage that I managed to get this tube loose and that's because right here there's a set screw that's supposed to screw into this and stop the tube from moving okay first of all no that's not going to work it's going to walk out and it did so now nah, I think it's uh, I think it's pretty shit I don't think that you should get whatever whatever that is I don't even really care I don't even want I don't even want you to know the name the name of it because it it wiggles really bad. Like for those of you who are bitching about uh, Scar 16 stocks moving around too much, I think this has got you beat, right? And as far as folding and stuff is concerned, okay, it's very 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 basic, and to me it screams, you know, fragile, right? Because you can see the locking surfaces there. Yeah, that doesn't look too structurally sound. And it kind of proved itself, too, because it came, it came loose during the shoot footage, so whatever. But, with that being said, if you guys want to learn how to use this, your pistol, your rifle, whatever, uh, you can go ahead and check out our website. We have classes posted. We have stuff coming up in um, Kentucky here. And we also have stuff coming up in uh, Arkansas. That's, at the, that's in, like, late March, early April, that type of stuff. Uh, there's Pistol 1 in Arkansas. Uh, pistol 1 and 2 in Arkansas, and Rifle 1 in Kentucky. That'll be a very indoor-centric class. It's called Indoor Rifle 1 because we'll, we'll be concentrating far more on home defense-type themes for that two-day class. So if you guys want to come out to those classes, go ahead and sign up. I will, let, I will keep you guys posted as far as more training events as they come up, uh, either through that or the Facebook page. Speaking of which... If you want to join the Facebook page for the discussion stuff that we do, I have a link for that in the description below. A lot of really smart guys with a lot of really good opinions. A lot of guys learning stuff there. Uh, a lot of different ideas getting tossed around. It's a, it's, it's a pretty good page. I'm proud of it. Um, and lastly, if you want to donate to us, look at the Adpocalypse thing has really screwed up a lot of people. And because of you guys donating to your favorite content creators, you kept a lot of those dudes on the map. Right, and while it and while I'm not going to vanish if no money's coming in from YouTube, it does make it quite a bit more difficult. Um, if none does, you see what I'm saying. So there's that. And for those of you, for those of you that really want to donate, like anything, I don't care what it is. It could be a one-time thing for a nickel, or it could be a dollar a month, whatever. Uh, we have. Um, a reward tier that really helps out the freaks of nature that come out and train all the time. If you want to pay $35 a month, you can take as many classes from us as you can. Okay? As many as you can, so long as you're signed up as a $35 a month guy. Um, there are specific terms and stuff that you could see on the website and then are outlined in the... Um, uh, on the Patreon page itself, but, you know, there you go. It's a it's a way to train even cheaper with us, even though our standard class price is 200 a piece, which is also really cheap. You go ahead and look around. You go ahead and look around. It's I'm pretty sure you're not going to find it as good of a deal for two days, for a two-day class, especially like a one class where it's like 1,400 rounds um, and two days, plus night shooting stuff. I'm rambling now, so I'm going to go ahead and take off. Personally, for those that that uh, didn't really find the cons to this really big cons, I would absolutely recommend this to somebody. For those of you that are bothered in the same way that I am on this, you're going to have to flip a coin, dude. Uh, for me personally, I'm willing to explore it and I'm willing to learn it uh, a little bit more as far as just training to the controls. But some guys may not, you know, so 
that's that's really your call. But with all that being said, guys, remember, regular guy's firearm is the last defense against tyranny. Be easy.